everyone, it's Rachel, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make five simple polymer clay charm designs, which are perfect for beginners or just people starting out using clay. I do also have some other videos that I've previously made in this little series, so if you would like to check them out, I'll leave the links down below in the description box. When you are a beginner, I also realize that you may not have many fancy polymer clay tools, and that's okay because most of the tools I'm going to be using in this video can be substituted for things that you can find around the house, such as toothpicks, bobby pins, safety clips, and paper clips. Any color of clay that I also use in the video can of course be changed around to a color that you have available to you. So the first charm I'm going to be showing you how to make is a cute little bear charm. So to begin, you want to take the color that you're going to be using to make your bear. The color that I'm making mine in this video is a color called Caramel by the brand Fimo. Firstly, roll this clay into a ball and then you want to place it on your work surface and use your fingers to press it down and shape it into a dome as this is going to be a flat back charm, meaning there is only detail on one side. You then want to take two smaller pieces of the same colored clay and roll these into balls because next we're going to be making the ears. So to create the shape of the bear's ears, you firstly want to flatten down your ball of clay and then just pinch one side between your fingers to create a teardrop shape. Also go ahead and do that with the other piece of clay as well. And then you also want to do it with two smaller pieces of clay in a different color of your choice, which will be the center of the ears. The color that I'm attaching on here to the center is called Iku and it's by the brand Primo. Once you have them positioned in the center, you then want to use a blade or something similar to cut away just the pointed part of the teardrop. And that way we will have a flat surface to work with that we can easily connect them to the head. So as mentioned, you can now now position the ears onto the domed shape of clay that we made before and then to help secure my clay together I'm just using my needle tool and I'm blending the very edges of the clay to help prevent the ears from falling off. Now it's time to make the facial features. So firstly I attached on a small oval of clay in the center of the face and I used the same color ecru clay that I used for the middle of the ears. Once you've popped that on, it's then time to create the eyes. So when I make my polymer clay eyes, I usually start by taking a ball tool or a dotting tool and I make two indents where I want the eyes to go. We then need to take some black polymer clay or whatever color clay that you're going to be using for the eyes and roll a small piece into a thin coil. Then you can take your blade and cut off two even sized sections and roll these gently between your fingers to shape them into balls. After you've done that, you can simply add them into the indents. To make the mouth and the nose, I attached on a thin piece of black clay which I just cut away from a small coil and then I also used a small piece of black clay which I patted down and positioned on for the nose. Finally, I'm going to be adding some cheeks or some blush to my bear charm to make it look more cute or kawaii, but of course this is completely optional. So to do this, I rolled a thin coil of some light pink clay and I cut off two even sized sections, which I rolled into balls. Then you can see here, I'm just positioning these on either side of the face and pushing them down with my finger so that they are secure. Lastly, if you would like to make it into a charm, you can take an eye pin and these can be bought in craft stores or you can also make your own just with some wire. I went ahead and I pushed this into the clay and then it's time to bake the charm in my oven according to my package's instructions. After my clay has been baked and cooled down, I then took some super glue, which I'm going to be using to secure the eye pin. You can see that I just removed the eye pin out of the charm and I put some super glue on the very end and then I just popped it back in. So here is what my finished little bear charm looks like. I love that even though it is a very simple design, it is still very cute and there's always the option of adding some other features and accessories as well, such as a little bow or a hat, if you are wanting to give it some more personality. Okay, so the next charm I'm going to be showing you how to create is a simple carrot. So for my carrot, I'm starting out with some bright orange polymer clay and I have rolled the clay into a ball. Next, you want to set it down on your work surface and roll it into the carrot shape, which is very similar to a teardrop. So to do this, when you're rolling it, just apply pressure on one side more than the other. And then that way it creates the teardrop shape with a wide end and a more narrow pointed end. You then may like to perfect the shape a little bit more more like I did, so I just picked it up and I'm just gently fixing it with my fingers. To give it some details, you can take a needle tool or something similar to create some light indents on the front of the carrot, starting at the top and going down and making some smaller indents as you go. To 
make the leaves of the carrot, take some green polymer clay and you want to separate this into three even sized sections for each of the leaves. Then you want to roll each of these three sections into a ball and you can do this between your fingers. Next, to make the shape of my leaves, I'm again rolling a teardrop shape on my work surface and I'm doing this with all three leaves and then I'm just pressing them down really gently on my work surface to flatten them down a little. Now you can take your needle tool again and just make a really careful indent right down the center of each leaf. And once you've done that, it's then time to connect them all together. I decided to connect them together on my work surface rather than picking them up because I just found it was easier to do. So I started by placing two of the leaves together side by side and then I took my third leaf and I placed it on top of the others, slightly lower than the other two. Then I used my blade to trim off the bottom part so that I had a flat surface to work with and it meant that I could easily position the leaves on top of the carrot. You can also blend down the edges of the clay together if you feel that you would like to make them more secure. Finally, you can go ahead and add an eye pin into your carrot if you would like to make it into a charm and then bake it in your oven according to your package's instructions. After baking, we need to secure the eye pin with some super glue. So I pulled out the eye pin and I added some super glue to the very end and then I just popped it back into the little hole. You can then also add some glaze to your charm if you would like to, but this is an optional step. So here is what our carrot charm looks like once it's completely finished. I think this design is great for people who have just got into sculpting and using polymer clay because it is very simple using only two colors and two shapes. Next up, I'm going to be showing you how to make the macaron charm. So macaron charms are really great to make when you're a beginner because you can pretty much use whatever colors you want. And the color that I'm going to be making my macaron today is a light pink. So to begin, start with two even sized pieces of clay and roll these into balls. Next, I like to take my acrylic clay roller and use it not because I'm rolling the clay down. I like to use it to sit the clay on the end and it helps me to easily move the charm around as I'm working with it and texturing it. So of course, you don't have to use a rolling Pin for this you could really use anything that you have lying around even like a container lid or the bottom of a jar would work really well too so I placed on one of my balls of pink clay onto the end and then I'm just flattening it down with my finger to get the shape and the size that I want then it's time to add the texture to our macaron so to do this I take my needle tool and I use it to go around the sides of the clay and kind of just gently pull it down towards the bottom so that it's almost separated in two halves and then I just use my needle tool again to texture the bottom part of the clay by gently swirling the clay with the very end of the needle. When I first started getting into polymer clay I really wanted to make macaron charms because I thought they looked fairly simple to create but I always found them really tricky to make and I could never get them looking exactly how I wanted so hopefully this little tutorial here will help any of you guys in the same boat. So you want to repeat these steps with both pieces of clay so that you have a top and the bottom of the macaron. The last thing we need to do is create the icing that goes in the center so you can take a different color of clay and you can see here that I've gone for a darker pink and you can start by rolling it into a ball and then flattening it down onto your work surface. If you find that sometimes your clay gets stuck on your work surface, you can use a blade or something really thin to kind of slide and wiggle underneath the clay and then that way when you pull it up, it won't wreck the shape that you've created. You can see here that I have turned over one of my outside pieces and I'm just going to position on the icing and then it's just a matter of placing the other biscuit piece on top and finally you can add an eye pin if you'd like to make it into a charm, then bake it in your oven according to your package's instructions. After baking, I took some super glue and I used it to secure the eye pin and then optionally you can also glaze your charm if you would like to. So here's what my finished macaron charm looks like. I always find these really fun to make because you can change up the colors and the flavors, even add little toppings and decorations on top if you feel like adding some more detail. Next up, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a present or a gift charm. Start by taking the color that you want your present to be and we firstly have to shape it into a cube. So to do this, I usually start off by pinching the clay with my fingers, turning it as I go so that I can create each face of the cube. And then I go ahead and I place it on my work surface and I kind of just gently roll it around so that I can press down each side to make the shape more smooth and precise. This process is really just a matter of taking your time and perfecting the shape as you go. 
Next, take the colour that you're going to be making the ribbon and the bow, and you want to start off by rolling the clay on your work surface into a long coil. Next, you can take one of your tools to flatten this clay down. Here I'm using my clay acrylic roller, but you could also use any other tool that you have or even the handle of something like a paintbrush would work really well too. I'm then taking my long blade and I'm trimming away the edges to make the clay nice and straight. And then I'm just pulling away the excess clay as well. We then need to attach the ribbon onto our present. So I'm beginning at what is going to be the bottom of the charm and I'm connecting the end of the clay in the center. And then I'm just going ahead and wrapping this all the way around the present until until I am back at the start and you can trim off any extra clay that you have. The ribbon also then needs to go on the sides of the present as well. So again, I'm attaching on the end piece of clay and I'm wrapping it only halfway around the present this time until I meet that other piece of clay and cut off the excess. And then I did exactly the same on the other side. To create the bow that goes on the top of the present, take a small strip of that same colour clay that you've been using and place it on top of your present, pushing it down carefully in the middle to connect it. Then what we're going to do is carefully curl each end into the centre so that they meet and this will create the loops for our bow. Finally, to finish it off, we need to add a small piece of clay in the centre so that it wraps over top of the bow. You can then go ahead and add an eye pin if you would like to make it into a charm and then you can bake it in your oven according to your package's instructions. After baking, take some super glue and use it to secure the eye pin and then optionally you can also glaze your charm as well. So here is what my finished present charm looks like. These charms are also really great to make because you can change up the colors to match whatever kind of style or vibe you're going for. And I really love making these present charms, especially around Christmas time, because they make great ornaments to hang on a Christmas tree. And the very last charm I'm gonna be showing you how to make in this video is a rainbow lollipop. I'm gonna be making mine a rainbow swirl lollipop and I understand that as a beginner you may not have all the colors that go in the rainbow. So you can of course switch it up and use the colors that you have available. To begin making our lollipop, you wanna start by taking a ball of white polymer clay and roll this on your work surface so that you end up with a thick coil. You then wanna prepare some small balls of clay in the colors that you're planning to use. And then we're gonna roll each of these into thin coils on our work surface. Once you've completed the first one, then go ahead and repeat this step for all the colors that you're planning on using. Next, we are going to add our thin coils of colored clay onto our thicker white coil. And we need to make sure that we leave some white space in between each color so that when we roll our lollipop in a moment, there will be a small white coil between each colored coil. If you have decided to create a rainbow lollipop like I am here, you wanna make sure that you have placed the colors in rainbow order. I then had some excess clay hanging over the edge, so I just decided to trim that off quickly, and then we need to roll this clay together on our work surface to create a long coil for our lollipop. Now is the time that we also create our swirls. So here I've just got my long coil of clay and I'm just very gently twisting it so that the colors are kind of swirled around. So cut off the very end of the clay and now it's time to create the round lollipop shape. So begin in the middle by wrapping the clay around onto itself and then continue wrapping the clay around and around the outside until you get to the size that you would like your lollipop to be. When you do find the size that you would like your lollipop, you can trim off the excess clay and I did this on an angle with my 
my blade. So this is what my lollipop currently looks like. I actually decided that I prefer the other side of it better, so I'm gonna be making that kind of like the main side that you see. To create the stick, I find that it's easiest to use a toothpick. So you wanna cut the toothpick in half so that it's not as long. And before you add it into your lollipop, you can create a small hole with a needle tool or something similar. And that way, when you add in the larger toothpick, it won't smush the clay as you push it in. If you do feel as if the toothpick needs to be extra secure inside the clay for whatever you're using this charm for, you can also firstly add some liquid clay if you have access to any. Then go ahead and add an eye pin if you'd like to make it into a charm and you can bake it in your oven according to your package's instructions. After baking, you can use some super glue to secure the eye pin in the top of the charm and then optionally you can also glaze your charm as well. So here is what my finished lollipop charm looks like. This design is very fun and colourful as well as fairly simple to create and I really love how the colours look and how they all swirl together. So that is how to make five simple charms using polymer clay. If you like this video don't forget to also check out the others that I have made for this beginners series too. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for lots more crafty and polymer clay videos and I will see you next time. Bye guys! Thank you.